How's everybody doing today? Right. So, good, good. How many people have heard of Bitcoin? Everybody. Blockchain technology? Lots have people. Use Bitcoin frequently? Few people. Would like to learn more about these topics. Great. Okay. Ask who owns a Bitcoin or has owned it. Excellent. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so my aim tonight is to provide an overview of potential applications of blockchain technology. Uh, there are some ideas expanding on those in my recent book on the topic, and the slides are available online at slideshare.net forward slash lablaga. We should think about the blockchain as another class of thing like the internet a comprehensive information technology with tiered technical levels and multiple classes of applications for any form of asset registry, inventory, and exchange, including every area of finance, economics, and money, hard assets, physical property, and intangible assets, and applications in science, art, literacy, and health. <coughs> As Piero mentioned, I have a traditional market, science, and arts background. I founded the Institute for Blockchain Studies last year specifically to take a look at the impact of blockchain technology on society. So I'd like to define Bitcoin and blockchain technology, then talk about markets applications, governance applications, and other applications in science, art, health, and literacy. So Bitcoin is finally a digital currency that works. It's a combination of BitTorrent peer-to-peer -peer file sharing technology with public key cryptography that creates a network such that any transaction can be independently confirmed as being unique and valid without having to have a centralized authority. Bitcoin overcomes a couple of cryptography problems, uh, notably the double spend problem in that any digital asset is infinitely copyable and also the Byzantine, Byzantine General's computing problem about trustless communication. The implication of decentralized transactions is that uh, you don't need to know or trust the counterparty, just the system. And what this means is that a vast, uh, vastly more transactions can actually take place. So how Bitcoin works is that, first of all, you would go ahead and download a software wallet as a mobile app or a web wallet. And a lot of people use blockchain.info. Also other people, I use Mycelium. Then uh, when, you, when, you down, when you install your wallet, automatically your Bitcoin, your 32 character Bitcoin address is created and it's QR code representation. And so then when you want to transfer Bitcoin, you and the other party, in, if it's in person, one will scan the, the QR code for the Bitcoin address of the other party and transfer the funds and then you can see this transaction posted shortly thereafter on the blockchain. You can use Bitcoin in lots of different places, both physically and in online purchases, and use an app like Bitcoin Map to find out exactly where. Uh, both individuals and companies right now are wondering, well, which cryptocurrency should I use? I've heard about Litecoin, Darkcoin, Dogecoin, various different cryptocurrencies. Uh, but Bitcoin, I realize this is impossible to see. This is uh, coinmarketcap.com, and Bitcoin has uh, Bitcoin's market cap is by far the largest of any cryptocurrency, 3.6 billion in a field uh, overall of 4 billion. So Bitcoin is the de facto standard. It has the largest network reach, and is really where all of the activity is going on. This is a one-year price chart of Bitcoin. There has been some volatility. Um, however, this year so far, the price has been fairly stable at $250 per one Bitcoin. The price volatility, uh, despite the price volatility, there has been uh, essentially stable uh, transaction volume uh, in the cryptocurrency. So the blockchain is the open source software upon which Bitcoin runs, a technology protocol layer just like TCPIP. Anybody, it is open source software, so anybody can download, review, and contribute to the software code base. Mm -hmm. And in addition to being the software, Bitcoin is really the transaction database, a decentralized public ledger of all transactions. It's like having a, a vast Google Docs spreadsheet on the web that anybody can look at and 
and administrators continually update with the new transactions. It's called the blockchain because it's literally batches or blocks of transaction uh, listed sequentially in a chain. So it's a decentralized open network, meaning you can find out where, where and what it is at all times. You can go to, uh, to this particular website and find out that right now, in fact, there are 6,400 global nodes running the full Bitcoin uh, <coughs> database. So even just from a perspective of banking and finance 2.0, Bitcoin makes sense. It can improve the existing way that the financial uh, architecture functions. Uh, we still have three-day interbank transfers, and that's way too long in this, in this day and age. Uh, beyond that, Bitcoin can be helpful in providing banking services to the 5 billion individuals worldwide without access to banking, credit, and financial services. In the remittance, remittances market is, is a $4 trillion global market with exorbitant transaction fees, 5 to 30 percent, and, um, and Bitcoin uh, Bitcoin funds transfer immediately as opposed to having to wait days or weeks. Also for vendors, for both vendors and customers, uh, Bitcoin is attractive because the 1-3% to merchant credit uh, card fee charge can be drastically reduced. And also you don't need to, as a consumer, you don't need to share your personalized data with, your, with the vendor you're making, a per that you're transacting with. We are all too familiar with Walmart and Chase and other service providers sending us letters that are digital uh, identity may have been compromised, and this is a way to protect that. So Bitcoin is not just for currency, but for many different, any, in fact, any kind of financial instrument, including bonds and insurance, and also public documents, the registration of land titles, death certificates, and so on. Smart property is a term that refers to registering uh, assets on the blockchain, for which you would get a unique digital identifier and essentially real-time trackability, a LoJack service for any kind of asset. So a company, the Block Trace Ledger, is doing this to track diamonds at the moment. And this could be used for keyless uh, access to cars and a much richer authentication and tracking structure for our property. Smart contracts are agreements between parties that are in, in posted to the blockchain for automated execution. This could be as simple as uh, you and I would like to bet, have a bet on the high temperature tomorrow. We can encode that to the blockchain, escrow our funds, and get automated payout per some sort of confirmation of the temperature tomorrow. And that is all without an intermediary to settle the bet. Other more complicated smart contracts include, uh, for example, an inheritance that might pay out at age 21 or at the death of the benefactor, uh, mortgages with automatic interest rate resets like many of us are familiar with, and even the most recent interesting example was a Greek finance minister suggesting uh, to improve transparency and accountability to put income tax receipts on the blockchain and a uh, kind of Ricardian contract structure. Right now, if you're interested in mashing up some code, Ethereum and Eris are the two providers of choice um, with open source code projects where you can start trying to work with smart contracts. The, um, there is a decentralized application ecosystem developing as the, uh, with many different projects being the, the decentralized response to the traditional centralized response so for example, OpenBazaar as the decentralized version of Craigslist, Lazoo's as Uber, uh, Storage as Dropbox, and so on. So it's nice to see the uh, ecosystem starting to fill out. One interesting thing about the blockchain is in regard to economic principles, we really only had one deployment of economic principles previously, and that was in markets. But the blockchain is causing us to rethink market <coughs> principles um, more generally and their application in many other venues. So uh, for example, any we could think of any interaction as a process of discovery and exchange. Market principles aren't just for economics anymore. So in some sense, blockchain is the economic layer that the web never had. We think that block the blockchain helps facilitate a number of interesting applications for us, the internet of humans, and that's certainly true. 
But more than that, the blockchain might be the great enabler of the Internet of Money and the Internet of Things, estimated to be $26 billion and a $7 trillion economy in less than five years. This could be especially useful is, as we could see smart home IoT networks uh, orchestrating the privacy of increasingly sensitive data streams, such as from our personal robotics and digital health assistants and also coordinating the communication between smart city infrastructure and connected cars. So after, after <laughs> markets, governance is the next big application area for blockchains. And we have transnational organizations like WikiLeaks, ICANN, and Wikipedia, but not really adequate governance structures for these transnational organizations. We see the tension in examples like the Snowden affair of uh, friction between nation states and individuals um, as nation states uh, coerced Visa and MasterCard to stop processing donations to WikiLeaks. Uh, instead, it might be appropriate to uplift organizational structures from uh, restrictional local areas to the blockchain cloud. And this might be a more effective, uh, transparent, and freedom-enhancing mechanism for governing global organizations. Existing examples in this area are decentralized DNS services like Namecoin. The granularity of the blockchain suggests that there could be governance services that are every bit as personalized as ordering a cup of Starbucks coffee. Uh, for example, some people might like to pay more for composting, while other, your neighbor might like to pay more for education. BitNation is a project in this area that uh, provided support for the world's first blockchain marriage held in October 2014 at a Bitcoins conference in Florida, which was presided over by uh, Jeffrey Tucker, who is a marriage equality activist. So notably, many this is a nice social application of blockchain technology that d different regulational, local, juris physical jurisdictions prohibit different, uh, pro uh, restrict different kinds of marriage. However, on the blockchain, uh, anybody is free to marry. Other examples of personalized governance services projects include Neighborly, San Francisco startup that allows you to vote your, direct your dollars towards uh, whichever community bonds you prefer by education or technology or different kinds of areas. Um, another project is Precedent Coin, which is peer-to-peer -peer arbitration services. And a very interesting new startup called Sidekick, which provides on-demand uh, tele-attorney tele counseling services. For example, if you are um, an individual in a traffic stop by police, uh, you might take advantage of their automated audio video recording service that is immediately uploaded to the blockchain. Other governance uh, services in the blockchain area would include a greater uh, representational democracy in voting. One idea is Futarchy. This is a two-step program where instead of voting on people as representatives, Individuals can vote in a two-step process. Number one, vote on desired outcomes. And then number two, vote in prediction markets for which, for the actual means of achieving these outcomes. Another idea is delegative democracy, where you would, uh, instead of vesting voting authority in a long-term representative, like we have in our governance structure now, it would be more uh, temporarily vested in a delegate. Another idea is random sample elections using the blockchain to facilitate individual, a sample of individuals uh, voting on certain issues. Another uh, great use of the blockchain is in legal services. So the blockchain could become the repository of the whole of a society's legal documents. And the way this could happen is the taking advantage of um, hashing plus timestamping functionality. So how this would work, this is an existing startup in Argentina called Proof of Existence. And so what happens is you have whatever file size you have, a genome, an art file, whatever file, you can run a hashing algorithm over it and obtain a unique 64 character code that correspond that can only have been run from that file's contents as they were at that time. 
and then you post it to the blockchain so you know exactly when that, uh, that file was created. And at any time later, you can rerun the algorithm over the file contents and confirm that it hasn't changed and that that particular party owned them at that earlier time. And so the idea is to put all, all manner of legal contracts and agreements, wills, trusts, uh, birth certificates, intellectual property registrations, et cetera, on the blockchain. This is an interesting example of a futuristic existing law firm called Robot, Robot, and Wong which already, nodding to the importance of how the legal field has shifted to one of big data, where the next obvious step would just be to enact this, these legal services and smart contracts and possibly DAX, which is uh, uh, distributed autonomous corporations to actually uh, fully autonomously take actions. Okay, so moving to blockchain science. So uh, the blockchain industry gets a lot of criticism for the mining operation. Uh, the mining operation wastes a lot of electricity, and um, mining is a process of adding transaction records to the blockchain by performing a computing task that is costly to execute but easy to verify. So the issue is this mining is purposefully wasteful to deter malicious players, uh, but these are unused uh, computational cycles. So there are some interesting green mining projects to try to take advantage of this, notably PrimeCoin, where the computing cycles are spent in trying to calculate prime numbers. Uh, FoldingCoin and GridCoin, which is a Berkeley project here, uh, to compensate participants in community computing projects like Protein Folding at Home and SETI at Home. And then also ZenNet, which is uh, the ability for uh, public individuals to access supercomputing resources. Uh, blockchain health is a very important potential application of blockchain technology because the uh, taking advantage of the blockchain's capability of being a universal structure for organizing and conducting transactions and protecting privacy. So this could be exactly the interoperable structure we have been looking for for electronic medical records, also possibly storing you know, our personal genomes and later our connectome files to the blockchain, also taking advantage of health document notary services on the blockchain to coordinate and affirm test results, ensure health insurance, and so on, and then perhaps for uh, doctor vendor RFP services to solicit uh, patients who need certain operations. Another classic case of blockchain health and is genomics, where jurisdictional regulation prevents many individuals worldwide from having access to their own genomic data. And instead, this could be scanned onto the blockchain. So we know that an industry has finally arrived when it is portrayed in our culture and art. Uh, this company, Bitfilm, um, conducts film festivals across the world. There are uh, examples, these are paper art fine wallets, or I'm sorry, fine art paper wallets, which is fine art, but is also a cold storage mechanism for storing uh, real Bitcoin. There's a variety of cryptographic art, data visualization as art, as to which fiat currencies are being converted into, block, into Bitcoin. And Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin MOOCs or literacy. So you might use this idea of smart contracts to actually do peer-to-peer -peer personal development aid instead of just monetary aid to emerging market countries. Further develop decentralized credit bureaus and open source FICO scores. So in summary, the blockchain is a new kind of information technology that might help restructure how we're doing all of our markets and governance and science and health kinds of applications. Blockchain technology, cryptocurrencies, and smart contracts are truly a new kind of thing, technically, conceptually, structurally, and socially, with tremendous potential to decentralize and transform the manner in which we conduct all activity, to realize futures that are more efficient and participative, scalable at a planetary level, and enhancing of core values such as liberty, equality, Thank you.